All right, guys. Sorry this is a little bit late. Um, things kind of came up the earlier this week that I wasn't able to do this recording, but I'm doing it now. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the modern Middle East. Our main focus in this particular PowerPoint is going to focus on the conflict in um, between Israel and Palestine there. And then we're also going to move into some other conflicts throughout the Middle East that are, in a lot of cases, still very relevant and still um, continuing here. So I think this is a good little lesson to transition into then our contemporary world unit that we're going to start next week. So let's go ahead and do this. All right. So modern Middle East, I always show this map because when we think about the Middle East, sometimes it's very hard to visualize and a lot of people think it's a pretty small area. However, when you supersede that onto that area, onto a map of the United States, it's a pretty big area. And even within this area, it's fairly diverse. Obviously, there's lots of similarities that are going to bring this region together. Probably the biggest being um, the religion of Islam is going to be a huge connecting factor for a lot of these countries here. But even within that, we're going to have um, different sects of Islam and conflicts within that as well. So it's actually a very diverse area, but we're going to talk about it um, kind of as a group here for, for the purposes of this lesson. So when we're talking about the Middle East, we got to think back to that mandate system. And remember, after World War I, this region that belonged to the Ottoman Empire is going to be divided. Okay, we have Turkey, and then we have the mandates that are going to be divided between Britain and France, and they're going to be controlled by Britain and France, pretty much between World War One and World War One and World War Two. Here, after World War Two, we're going to see most of these areas gain their independence here from Britain and France, but we're still going to have a lot of lasting issues and tensions in these areas because a lot of times the borders that the British and the French and other European countries that get involved in the Middle East don't line up with traditional borders and don't line up with um, cultural borders as well. So it's going to cause a lot of issues here. Let's talk specifically about Israel. Okay, And in Israel, Israel is the traditional home of the Jewish people. And if you guys remember last year, you probably talked about the Jewish diaspora, where the Jewish people were forced out of Israel and kind of spread throughout the world and other areas there. But traditionally, if you talk to a Jewish person, the traditional home of the Jewish people is in Israel. And Zionists, that's a term for Jewish nationalists, so people that want a Jewish state, a Jewish home. Okay, The Balfour Declaration was declared in the 1920s here, kind of right after World War I. And the Balfour Declaration is after Britain gains the region of Palestine that is today partly Israel. Okay, They're going to invite the Jewish people to settle in, um, in Palestine there and kind of invite them back to their home. That's the Balfour Declaration. So this is when we start seeing um, some major migration of Jewish people back to what is today Israel-Palestine, okay? And, of course, in 1948, after World War II, we have the state of Israel created by the UN. And a lot of this has to do with the Holocaust and all of the horrors that the Jewish people, um, the Jewish people saw and um, experienced during the Holocaust. There's a big push for the creation of a home state, a home country for the Jewish people. And traditionally, again, this is the home of the Jewish people, the traditional home here. And so they just decide Israel is going to be the new state for the Jewish people here. And they create a new country in Israel in 1948. However, Israel um, slash Palestine was mostly occupied by native Muslim people called Palestinians, right? The Palestine, Palestinians there who are Muslim. And this is, they've been in this area for hundreds and hundreds of years and had established homes there. And now they're being pushed out by the state of Israel and the creation of the state of Israel. Also, when you think about where Israel is geographically, it's surrounded by Muslim states, okay? All these areas around it, 
Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, throughout the Middle East, all Muslim states, majority Muslim populations here. So Israel is pretty much surrounded by um, Muslim countries there. And within Israel, we have the tensions there of the Palestinians losing then their homeland to the Israelis. So I do want to note here, this is an extremely complicated subject, extremely complicated issue that is continuing on to today. Okay. And we're covering the very, very surface level of this issue in our class. There are literally, you could take hundreds of classes that are literally just about this issue um, in college. And I, I took a couple of them and I still think that I have very, very surface level knowledge. So just know that this is extremely complicated and there's a lot more to it here, but we're just doing surface level. Okay. But very interesting if you do want to do some more research, in my opinion. All right. Now, Muslim, the surrounding Muslim states here, they're going to support the Muslim Palestinians by invading Israel. Okay. And they do this several times. We have several Palestinian, we have several Israeli um, Arab wars here. The first one is called the called the Six Day War, which we'll get to in a second. Okay. But when the UN originally created Israel, they divided in Israel and Palestine. So the more yellow areas you see here, that's the Palestinian land, and the blue areas are Israeli land. When we have these Arab-Israeli wars, Israel's going to win and take more land. So by 1967, this is the area that Israel occupies versus then the Palestinian areas, okay? So, Six-Day War, 1967. Six-Day War is called a Six-Day War because it lasted six days, okay? And as a result of this Six-Day War, again, this is one where um, the surrounding Muslim countries are going to invade Israel, okay? Israel is going to conquer the occupied territories of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. If we go back here, these areas here in the 1967 resolution... Okay, that are designated Palestinian areas, they are now going to occupy those areas there. So the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Both of those areas are areas that you're still going to hear about in the news today. They're still very um, contested areas, and we're going to get to that in a second as far as what is the modern conflict look like. Okay, but this is kind of where it begins. Okay, and so they're going to occupy those areas, and they also take over the Sinai Peninsula, which originally belonged to Egypt. Okay, and it's an Egyptian territory. So they're going to take over the Sinai Peninsula here, which is pretty important because, look there, there's the Suez Canal. Okay. We also have the Yom Kippur War, which those of you who did your research on Golda Meir, this is her big victory here. And the Yom Kippur War, kind of the same ideas, right? And within the Yom Kippur War, Golda Meir, she is going to give Egypt the Sinai Peninsula back and say, but on condition saying, is Egypt, you have to recognize Israel as an independent state and we'll give you the Sinai Peninsula back. And Egypt says yes. So Egypt then officially says that Israel is an official state and belongs there and pretty much stays out of um, Israel's hair after that. So that's a pretty big victory there. But they don't have to deal with Egypt. Yom Kippur War. So the Palestinian conflict is still going, Palestinian-Israeli conflict is still going on. Okay. And within, within what is the area of Palestine-Israel today, we still have the Palestinians revolting against the Israeli government, revolting against that occupation. And these uprisings that we see every once in a while, or pretty often actually, is called, are called intifada. And actually, if you have already done the primary source for this week, um, the two girls talk about one of the intifadas. The intifada had just happened, um, I believe it was 2001, when there was a pretty major intifada that just happened that then created a lot of restrictions and things like that. And that's a lot of what they're talking about in that primary source there. 
Okay, but an in, in intifada is any time that the Palestinians revolt against this Israeli government. Again, they want their own country. They're nationalists. They want their own country outside of the rule of Israel. Okay. PLO was created the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Originally very much a terrorist organization as far as they use a lot more terrorist tactics. Um, it's kind of interesting because when you don't have a state to back you up, i.e. Palestine isn't officially a country according to Israel, it isn't a country according to a lot of different um, places around the world, which again is part of the issue here, okay? When you don't have a state to back you up, your army is automatically then considered terrorists. However, the PLO does use things like bombings um, and uh, attacking of civilians and killing of civilians as part of their tactics there. So it is what um, it is an interesting situation there. Okay. However, the PLO today is a lot more of just a political group. And really, we don't see um, those terrorist tactics used by the PLO anymore. We do have another group called Hamas that uses more terrorist tactics, but that's a different group now. But PLO is a little bit more of a, of a um, political group today. Okay? And I do want to say also that the Israelis do then retaliate when there is uprisings, when there are terrorist attacks done by the um, Palestinians or PLO or the Hamas, Israel is then going to retaliate um, pretty severely with a lot of violence as well. So, again, violence on both sides. Keep that in mind. All right. So, Israel today, we have the Oslo Accords. And the Oslo Accords were um, discussed in the late 90s. Um, Bill Clinton was the president at the time that kind of helped oversee this, the American president at the time. And essentially, the idea is land for peace. So Israel and Palestine are going to agree that the West Bank and Gaza are going to be Palestinian areas okay, for Palestinians. However, not exactly perfect because we have a lot of Israelis living within the West Bank and living within Gaza, the Gaza Strip and refusing to move. Recently, there's been a lot of um, issues about Israeli government building um, buildings and apartments and stuff within the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Um, and again, is that allowed? Probably not. So there's still a lot of tensions here. It's not perfect um, by any means, but that was the agreement that came out of the Oslo Accords, this land for peace. Okay. Really, though, we still don't have the peace between the two sides, and this issue is extremely complicated because if you think about it, both sides have very, very legitimate arguments. Um, you know, the Jewish people, do they deserve a homeland? Do they deserve their own country? I think a lot of people say yes. However, on the same token, the Palestinians, do they deserve their own country? I would say a lot of people say yes to that as well. Okay? So it's very much a, um issue that is still not resolved, still going on. And because it is so complicated and because both sides have very um, legitimate arguments to it, okay? All right, so again, this recording only goes to 15 minutes, so I'm going to do a second recording here, and we're going to talk about modern ethnic and religious conflicts within the Middle East. So join me for the second PowerPoint here in just a minute.